ready to receive the opening kick are Ramonte Barfield and also back there Joseph Ward. There's a look at staff as he gets permission to get going. Denny Laria and his crew on the field and we're ready for some football. Big crowd here in Washington High Stadium tonight as you can imagine. Staff is going to send it deep. This is Ward bringing it back. Ward breaks free. He's up to the 40. Staff, the kicker, can't get to him. And Ward is finally going to be run down on the far side of play by Shaw Sunder. Wow. Special teams so important. We talked about it last week, early in the season. And last week's game, you know, at North Allegheny, there were a lot of mistakes made. But this was not a mistake by Wash High. That's a great run back by that Joe Ward. 57 yards on the return as we take a look at it on our Comcast DVR instant replay as Joe Ward takes it near the goal line and goes. Great return and Sunder just caught him from behind to knock him out to the boundary line. 77 yards on the return. Now Wash High is going to go on offense immediately here. Jump right into it with Chad Smith, who threw two touchdown passes last week against Waynesburg. But before we can get the snap away, there's a flag on the play. And don't you know, as the underdog and a big underdog in this game, they would like nothing better than to use that big play to set up a quick touchdown and Prior throw to a little snap. shock. Encroachment against the defense. Five yard penalty, first time. Denny Loria working with his crew here tonight at Wash High Stadium. First offensive play is a penalty, unfortunately, for the Prexies. Let's take a look at the officials right there. Denny, Dino, and Jimmy Laria working with Larry Tomai, Mark Sherpak, and Ron Holler wearing the striped shirts tonight. First down and five for Wash Eye, the penalty against Jeanette. Smith, two-step drop, fires over the middle. It's complete down to the five-yard line. And the Washout Prexies are on the move here as the slant is caught by Ramonte Barfield, who had those two touchdown receptions last week, John, against Waynesburg as we take a look at the lineup. There are the starters. Chad Smith had a big game last week, and so did Barfield. So keep your eye on him because he's got speed, obviously, and we've already seen that Joe Wood has plenty of speed, too. That was an excellent pattern. Nice slant. Harris had to come in late and make the tackle, but they're threatening early. First and goal from the five. Smith sets him down under center. Fakes the quick pop, then throws a fade over to the near side, and it goes incomplete. Thomas Kelly trying to dive for it, twisting and turning around, couldn't get there in time. And you could already also see some of that speed that I talked about on that defense for the Jayhawks. Uh, they're going to get after the quarterback, and I don't think he's going to have a lot of time for long passes. Of course, he doesn't need one here. He needs a mm -hmm. quick hitter or a quick opener or a slant. Tried to go out to the sideline in the end zone. There's a Jeanette defensive lineup on your screen. Linebackers and corners. Smith under center once again, a slot to the left side. And he's going to rifle one into the end zone, but it's incomplete. Again, Barfield, the intended receiver. And, John, there it is again. He tried to run another slant and also flooded that right post area with Thomas Kelly in there as well. And they're keeping Harris busy back there in that secondary right now, aren't they? They sure are. Washington right now, though, is looking at third down and goal from the five. This quick yardage and the quick move downfield all set up by the great kickoff return by Joseph Ward who got them deep into Jeanette territory early and then the slant to Barfield from Smith. Again the slot goes to the left side broken eye backfield third down and goal from the five. This time they're going to run the football and on second effort perhaps getting over the line of scrimmage the wash eye Prexies trying to advance that ball and this time carrying it was Sean Vaughn. He's the tailback, only 5'5", 170, and a senior. He got cracked as soon as he got up to the line, but was able to bounce free for a moment. It was really stuffed up the middle, and you saw him try to go outside, but there was the quick reaction of those defenders on that side of the field to come up and smother the play. And just as it could have been a big shock to Jeanette, 
what a disappointment this is going to be if they don't get it in the end zone. Oh, you better believe it. Mosiah Harris came up. Jerry Harris got there first. And Washington gained a yard on that play. They're looking at fourth and goal. Wash high. And immediately the Prexies, John, have to call a timeout. So they have something to think about here is all of a sudden Jeanette has tightened up and tightened up in a big way. Yes, absolutely. And, you know, those, those pass plays, that was the right idea, I think. That's the first time they put the ball on the ground through the running back, and there wasn't anything at all up the middle. So the question is here, are they going to try to score the touchdown or kick the field goal? Tonight's game is being presented live as the game of the week on PCN. PCN only on cable. And, of course, each and every week we are on Comcast here in the Pittsburgh region. Of course, our games on Friday night played back on Saturday on the FYI channel here in Pittsburgh. And then on the following Monday after the game, they're on the Comcast On Demand channel in the Your Town folder. Easy to find, and they'll be up all the way through uh, this season and into next year. And I think, too, Chris, as you would expect from a highly ranked team, there is a pretty good following here from Jeanette. There's a lot of red in these stands. They've labeled this conference the interstate because all the teams are off of I-70, I-79. You know what? They have so many teams in the conference that they only get to play one non-conference game. So, That's boom, right. they jump, jump right into conference play, all of the teams last week. Good point, John. Mark Wise is in at fullback right now. Vaughn is the tailback. They shift the slot to the right. Smith on the rollout, looks into the end zone, fires. That's going to be a Washington touchdown over that far corner, and it's caught by Thomas Kelly with 10 and a half to go here early in the game in the first period of play. And what an important touchdown that is. And how disappointing it would have been for the Prexies not to get it in the end zone, but Thomas Kelly, the senior, made the catch in the corner. That was timed perfectly because there was good pressure coming from Jordan Hall, but a good job by the quarterback that time, Chad Smith. Watch him go, and here comes the pressure, and just gets it away, beautifully thrown into the corner. Chad Smith's third touchdown pass of the year. He had two last week. That drive went five plays, took 20 yards, and only a minute 27, and again, set up nicely by that long kickoff return. A 77-yarder by Joseph Ward. Now the Prexies getting set for the extra point try. Nick Powell is the kicker. He also plays center on the linebacker and the straight-ahead kicker, and he didn't get it over the bar. Yep, hit right into the middle and bounced back down onto the grass. The try's no good. Start. Score will be six to nothing. I never heard the official apologize <laughs> for a missed extra point. I haven't either. That's the first time I've heard that. But there's the touchdown pass again. He just had enough room in that corner to get in there ahead of the defender. And it was Kenny Grant trying to cover the territory and get to him. But the Prexies get on the board first, and I think that's very, very important for them tonight. Yeah, the one thing that Bill Britton's team didn't want to do is get down early and as often as Brownsville did last year, uh, or last week, I should say, in that 60 to nothing loss. And Washington has made a statement. And let's see what Katie Sesney has to say with those cheerleaders down on the field. Hey, guys, well, I tell you what, they're missing their captain tonight because she's six, but these Jeanette Jayhawk cheerleaders are doing a heck of a job anyway. Show us what you got, guys. And their Comcast shirt down there. Couldn't ask for more. That's spirit. That's Comcastic. I don't believe we've gotten our Comcast shirts. Have we the red ones yet? No, not quite. Uh, I haven't seen it. Hmm. Wonder if, is Katie in charge of those? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> we'll have to find out. There's the guy who caught that touchdown pass, Thomas Kelly. 6'4", 168 senior. There's a look at the ladies from Jeanette, PA. And with a Comcast C and those pom-poms. I like that, too. That's a way to get on, too. That's right. And Washington's going to kick off here. This is Chad Smith teeing it up and booting it away. And hauling it out of the air, Jordan Hall. Hall comes straight forward. Hall. First through the wedge and is tripped up at the 35-yard line. And now Terrell Pryor goes to work at quarterback for the Jayhawks. Yeah, it looked for a moment like they might return the favor. He had a little bit of a hole up the middle, and then he got the jarring tackle right at the 35. If he's able to move, slip that tackle, he might have been on the move. Pryor, a man among boys out there. He really stands tall 
over the huddle. He's 6'6", 220 pounds, a senior quarterback. John, you mentioned in the pregame show a stellar basketball player as well. We saw him in the WPIL championship game last year. And they go a little cross buck, and the inside handoff is going to go to Mike Matt, fullback, 6'2", 220, and a senior. Well, that's one of the things that Coach uh, Rich told me. He said, we're going to use the fullback up the middle. And he said, the other thing that's going to happen all during the season, he said, it's kind of tough to prepare for every team because of the fact uh, we're not quite sure what they're going to do, and we know they will gamble from time to time and try certain things. Breyer appears to be going no huddle. They're just kind of standing around talking about it. Now the snap. And he's going to look to throw. And he fires over the middle, and it's caught nicely by Jerry Harris. Looking back at the football, Harris brought down at the 42-yard line in the Washington end of the field by Mark Wise. But Jeanette will move the chains early. Well, that is an example of the strength of this young man's arm. Sets himself. He's big, 6'6", six, six, on target. Nice catch. 18-yard gain on the play for the Hawks. Slot to the right side this time, and a quick hitter inside. And again, it's Mike Matt who carries the football. And Matt doesn't want to go down. It looks like he has about a nine-yard gain and still fighting for more. We'll see down where they inside spot it. the 34-yard line. Take a look at the starting lineup for the Jayhawks of Jeanette, Mr. Pryor and company. Sean Sunder also plays quarterback for them in addition to tight end. Big line up front. A lot of these guys only played one quarter of football last week against Brownsville. They were ahead so big. Ray Ritz decided to let some of the backups in and get him some work. Jerry Harris this time running around the left-hand side, and that'll be a Jeanette first down to the 30-yard line as we take a look at the Prexy defense right now. Sam Miller's the guy you talked about in the pregame show. He is a load. Yes, he is. But he'll be expected to put a stop to that run up the middle, that tackle-to-tackle -tackle offense that they promised they would go with tonight, at least early on. And there it is again. Another quick hitter, John, and it's Mike Matt, the fullback, taking it up the middle. Matt last year rushed for 272 yards in a reserve roll and scored two touchdowns. He and Terrell Pryor are supposed to be uh, headed up to Penn State to see Notre Dame play. That's right, uh, tomorrow. tomorrow. They'll be on the sidelines, an unofficial visit as we take a look at Coach Ritz on the far sidelines. Ray Ritz telling me also, hey, I've got to keep these guys' heads out of the clouds. We've got a lot of work to do before anything happens. Jordan Hall breaking a tackle, getting down to the 20-yard line as he turns the right corner. And finally stopping him, Joseph Ward for the Prexies. And that was an excellent move as he was able to shed those tacklers. They were doing a pretty good job outside, but he made that quick spin move, picked up the extra yard, and got the first down. Here's our Comcast DVR instant replay. No, not going to get him right there. And the other defender was out of position. Tried to juke that guy, but does pick up the first down. A little motion. They pick inside, go outside. And it's Jerry Harris turning the left corner. And Harris is sliced at the shoestrings and brought down over on that far side of play. And Mark Wise got a piece of him as he turned the corner. And it's obvious that these guys are all very good at slipping tackles. Because that's what's happened on the last two plays. Give them the leg and take it away. A look at Jerry Harris. Coach Ritz feels he has three or four Division 1A players potentially on this roster. Run up the middle. Matt this time will be stopped. And the Hall of Presidents came and got him that time. Brian Thomas leading the way 28 for the Prexies. And so far, we have not seen Pryor running the football. I know we will, but we haven't seen it yet. He's been doing a lot of handing off and faking, and they've been trying to power it up the middle. John, what is it? Two or three scouting services have him ranked as the number one prep boy player in the country. Right That's now. true. There are a couple of them that way. Here Play he comes action. on the rollout. And the throw to the end zone. Yeah. It's going to be a touchdown for the Jayhawks. Jordan Hall making a nice over-the-shoulder catch on the pass from Terrell Pryor. Well, he had over 500 yards rushing last year. 289 yards passing and four touchdowns. He had seven touchdowns rushing, and he's got a touchdown here. See how strong he is? And when he goes out like that, Chris, the defense has to respect him. That's going to help open up things downfield, and that's what happened on that play. Oh, absolutely. Nice touch on that ball. As strong as he is, he knows how to pull back a little. But he put it right there, and Jordan Hall shakes his head. He agrees. Point after is coming up now. 
Low snap, handled, and they're going to pop it high, and it is good. So Jeanette takes a 7-6 lead on the extra point kick by Mike Danko, the 6-foot, 140-pound senior kicker. Take a look at the numbers on that scoring drive. Nine plays, 65 yards. Only three minutes and 16 seconds taken off the clock. And the 15-yard pass from Terrell Pryor to Jordan Hall. And you see the strength. And if you're a defender and he starts moving outside and trying to get outside, you have to come up and respect that. And that certainly opened it up for Jordan Hall. See how big he is compared to the others? He's 6'6". Oh, he Schools, colleges, well, speculation continues. I was told yesterday that it's down to about 12. He said maybe 10. There's some talk that he wants to stay close to home, which would put, I suppose, Penn State, certainly West Virginia, Ohio State in the running. But he has made it clear that wherever he decides to go, he's going to play football and basketball. Said he wants to stay close to home, but not too close. He has ruled out the University of Pittsburgh, although... Dave Wanstack called him the other day and said, we're still actively recruiting, recruiting you. And Terrell said, okay, I'll accept that. <laughs> well, I think, and we'll talk to Mike White about it at halftime, but I think he needs some place like a Texas or a West Virginia that plays a wide open offense where he can utilize both his running and his passing. Not that he wouldn't be good at either one if he just did that alone. Ramonte Barfield on the return up over the 22 and gang tackled on the play driven backwards. They're going to spot him to the 23-yard line on that return, and that's where Wash High will take over offensively. With 7.03 to go here in the first period of play, Chris Shublin, John Sanders, Katie Sesney here, the Comcast High School football game of the week, and tonight also live on the Pennsylvania Cable Network. Well, one thing that's already happened to both teams that didn't happen last week is that the opposition has scored because they both pitched shutouts last that's week. True. That was a big win by Washington. You know, two seasons ago, they were ahead of Waynesburg and ended up losing, I think, 23-21 was the final score. They thought that they blew the game, and that set the tone for a 4-6 and six season. And that win last week, they believe that's going to set the tone for this season. So hopefully they're correct. Good football tradition here in Washington. What a Washington hit there PA. in the backfield. Smelled that one out quickly and put him to the turf. Not much chance for Ward on that play. And Joseph Ward didn't get anything there. As a matter of fact, he'll lose three. It'll be second down and 13 yards to go. And we'll also keep an eye on Pryor on defense. He is a safety, but he will move up. He will go all over the field defensively. You'll see him on the line trying to blitz to rush the quarterback. And right now he's in the deep secondary. Chad Smith, the quarterback for the Little Prexy, 6'2", 210, and a senior. Another inside handoff, and again, Jeanette's going to turn up the defensive steam, and there's nothing there for the presidents. Again, this time the ball carrier, Mark Wise. Well, that's some of that speed and strength that I talked about is one of the keys for that defensive line, and they are very, very tough. Right now, the Prexies are going the wrong direction. Going to lose a couple more on that one. Third down and a short 15. And for example, Pryor now is, is lined up on the line. You can see him right there near mm -hmm. the football. And he's a little disappointed, I'm sure, because his grandfather was coming down here and had some car trouble and is missing the first game that he's oh, no. missed. So not he's not that. here, and they don't want to let the grandpa know that they're thinking about him. Pryor will rush off the left defensive end. Here he comes. And they run away from him. And, and there's a flag. Turning too. the corner around that right side is going to be Joseph Ward once again. And again, Jayhawks gang tackle. Just about everybody in a white shirt going after the ball. These are good ball hawking Jayhawks, we can tell you that. Washington is going to pick up a couple of yards, but they're looking at fourth down and 13, and they're going to have to get rid of it. Well, if it's a holding call, I'm sure it will probably be declined. Denny Loria. Holding against the offense. The penalty is refused. Fourth down. All right, so the Prexy is going to have to punt it away. And right now, let's take a look at the 
Wash Eye scoring drive. Again, the opening kickoff of the game. Joseph Ward taking it deep into Jayhawk territory. And then Smith on a great slant pass to Barfield. And then they finish it off with a touchdown pass to Thomas Kelly. And that's how they got on the board, but they missed the extra point. Now the punt almost blocked, but they did get it away. And a pretty good roll, as a matter of fact, Chris. He just did get that off, and he got a nice bounce, and it rolled out of bounds before Jordan Hall could get to it. 41-yard line. Jeanette takes over after a 39-yard Chad Smith punt. Four fifty seven left first period of play a one point game Jeanette seven Washington six hot night here in what we affectionately call little Washington a lot of Western Pennsylvania is called a little Washington that's true <laughs> here's a toss and Jeanette running the ball with Jordan Hall and Hall almost stripped down, breaks the tackle, and then runs down to the 32-yard line. You know, I thought he was going to lose the football there for a minute. The arm tackle, and they went for the football. He was able to twist away and keep on rolling, but a good pop through that left side of that line. Here's another look at that toss. Good blocking by the Jayhawks. Wash high. Finally, Mark Wise comes in and closes in on the tackle. And wash high. We'll call a timeout here. They need a breather with 4.49 to go in the first quarter of play. They trail by one to the Jeanette Jayhawks. Now let's get some credit to the left side of that line. Go with a group of paranormal investigators as they set out to explain the unexplained by searching the Mount Carmel Cemetery in Center Township, PA. It's only on Comcast On Demand in the Your Town folder. There is the much ballyhooed and highly touted Terrell Pryor. And if those Jayhawks look familiar to you, you must know a little bit about that university in Lawrence, Kansas. <laughs> Absolutely. Same logo, same style, same mascot. Well, I'm talking about the left side of that line, and I'm talking about Sammy Moore, Adam Locke, and doing some great blocking tonight. They have really opened it up up the middle, which is what they wanted to do. Tackle to tackle. High backfield strong to the right side for Terrell Pryor. Play fake. Flushed and he throws. And a jump try at it, but it goes incomplete. And the intended receiver deep downfield was Shaw Sunder, 6'4", 180-pound senior. Check that, not Sunder, rather, but Anthony Smolka. He's the tight end who was looking back for that ball. You know, I think he kind of missed time to jump a little bit mm -hmm. that time. Uh, it looked like he was going to get up, and the ball was far enough that it was going to be over the defender's hand, but by the time he got up in the air, the ball wasn't there, and when he came down, it was gone. But again, he, uh, prior, he operates so smoothly back there. He's in no hurry, under control. He got a little bit of pressure that time, simply stepped away from it. Obviously, John, the game comes to him very slowly. He just soaks it all in. Another case in point. Now he's going to have to bounce out. Look yeah. at him go. And he'll just take it out of bounds. I think he's probably going to be a little short of that first down marker. Pretty close to it, but he knew where he was going, and he just was not going to take a hit. He was going to get out of bounds. 21-yard line is where he got to. Did he get enough to get to the stick? Officials are saying yes, yes he did. That's a first down for Terrell Pryor. And the first time he has run the football tonight. And you can see the guy trying to give him some company. There was Miller. Well, nothing to it. I'll just step out of bounds. That's all. Saw Terrell Pryor, as we said, play in the WPIL championship game. Losing to Al Equipa and Herb Pope and that great team that they had last year. Pope's team went on to the state championship game and lost that one, though. Now the quick hitter up the middle and a big blast all the way down near the goal line is James Derry. Derry who rushed for almost 600 yards last year with a nice quick opener. And Jeanette will have the ball first and goal from the wash high two. Well, it's uh, like a broken record a little bit. When we look at our Comcast DVR instant replay. They pop it open up the middle. And then all Derry has to do is get those legs pumping. And you said he had good yardage last year. So it's a good combination with Mike Matt and 
James Derry back there. Thomas Kelly with a saving tackle on the play. Now Pryor with a quarterback keeper. He's in for the touchdown, ducking under center. And the Jayhawks improve on their lead. As they're now up 13, or check that, 12 to 6, I should say. Oh, no, I was right the first time, 13 to 6. <laughs> I knew I was never See, good at math. John. When somebody doesn't make the extra point, it just screws up everything. <laughs> I know it really does. <laughs> that they're putting the lights up on the wrong side of the scoreboard, so they're readjusting it now. There he is. Did he have 27 touchdowns last year? He had one last week. He caught a pass for a touchdown last year too. He did. did he not? Yeah, he did. He's an amazing athlete. Hawks on to kick. Mike Danko. Sunder the holder, the kick is up, it's high, and it is good through the pipes. 14-6 is the score. Jeanette in the lead. 4-12 to go. Mr. Pryor takes a drink on the bench, and the fans are just saying, well, it's another day at the office for Jeanette Jayhawk football, at, at least uh, in the past couple of years. You know, John, last year they went 14-2. and two. The only games they lost were to Yawk in the Interstate Conference and then the state championship game to Wilson area. Katie, let's get out of the field and find out what you're up to. Hey, guys, I'm on the sideline here with Devin Chilato, and he's an extraordinary young man. He is a senior this year at Washington. He had leukemia when he was in ninth grade. He actually used to play on this team and wasn't able to physically play anymore. But you come out anyway. Why do you do it, Devin? Uh, I just like to support the team. I mean, I went through a big battle, and I like to come out here and watch them battle. I mean, it's not as big as what I went through, but, I mean, we're from Washington. We play our butts off every day. Okay, and your brother plays on the team, right? Yeah, he's a defensive tackle. Drew Gelato. Um, he's a sophomore this year. And it's pretty good. Well, exciting. Well, I'm sure they appreciate you coming out, yeah. and we're so glad we had a chance to meet you. Right, Thanks. Thank Back you. to you guys. All right, Katie, and we did have a chance to talk to him right before the game, and we got the pronunciation of his name now straightened out officially, right? That's, that's <laughs> for sure. You get it from the family. That's when the guy knows it. All right, here's the kickoff for the Jayhawks. Barfield's going to run under it at the 10. Shifts into high gear and goes up to about the 30-yard line. 20-yard return for Wash High, and they have the ball back, trailing by a 14-6 to six margin here as uh, we're getting deeper into the first period of play. Unfortunately, you've got a Wash High player limping off the field right there. And Sean Vaughn, 24, as we take a look at Jeanette's scoring drive. Terrell Fryer capped it off with a two-yard touchdown plunge on the keeper. The one thing that the Wash High coach, Bill Britton, told me, he said, you know, this Jeanette football team is like a tire. And if you're on top of the hill and you lose control and it starts to roll, <laughs> look out. <laughs> we'll see. See if Chad Smith can get him back close again, down by a touchdown. Blitz, Blitz is coming. Yep. And Washington doesn't really pick it up. The handoff goes to Joseph Ward. He's going to be tumbled in the backfield for about a five-yard loss. Well, there wasn't anything Joseph Ward could do about that that time because they were coming. Montel Walker, the nose guard, leading the tackling that time. And so far, the Prexies in returning the kicks that they have returned so far, three of them have had decent success going right up the middle against the Jayhawks. Chad Smith trotting back from the sideline after getting a play, heading back in. Presidents looking at second down at 15. Pryor on the defensive side of the ball now. Uh, when it gets into a rush the passer situation, he'll move down as a defensive lineman. Barfield coming in motion to the left. Smith. Flush, hit, drops the football, it's loose on the run, and it's going to be picked up by Jordan Hall and taken in for a fumble return touchdown with three minutes to go in the first period of play, and the Hawks score on defense. Uh, just too much pressure again. Those last two plays, they just ate up the front line of the Prexies, and he was all over him from the get-go that time. There was just nothing that the quarterback could do. Blocker doesn't get there. Ball is stripped. Looked like Shaw Sunder stripped the ball, John. Right, and when it was an easy pickup and an easy touchdown for Jordan Hall. Credited a 12-yard fumble return for a touch. 
Well, obviously, there are more weapons on this team than number 11. <laughs> I don't think there's any question to that. The extra point kick is going to be blocked. That time they brought in John Staff to the do the place kick. extra point try is no good. It might have been Anthony Magnone who got in there and blocked that ball 26 for Wash High. It was a terrific job, whoever made that penetration, because once you get that penetration, then you can usually get to it. I think that might have been Ward that blocked that. I tip. think you're right, John. Well, whatever the case, the Jeanette fans are happy. Right now, they lead 20 to 6 over Wash High. Comcast on demand right now. Travel with us as we find hidden culinary gems in and around Pittsburgh from world famous dishes and desserts to a one of a kind Western Pennsylvania cuisine creation. We'll see and taste the best food that maybe you haven't even heard about and the people and places who make them famous. Only on Comcast on demand. Call 1 800 Comcast to get on demand today. Well, the Prexies need another good kick return here, Chris. Something to wake them up a little bit. That's what they got to start the game, John, and that really got them sparked. They got that early touchdown. Could be a short thinking. kick here. And it's going to be a bouncer finally. Yeah. That free ball is picked up. Thomas Kelly, Stand I believe, loose the man again, got isn't to it? it. Jeanette says they have it. They do. Oh, brother, this is a big, big, big deal here now for the Jayhawks. Well, it's the kind of thing that happened to the Wash High last year against Jeanette. Some weird plays, turnovers, easy touchdowns uh, was very costly to them a year ago. I'll tell you what, Jeanette doesn't need any help, Chris. No, not at all, John. You see that ball bouncing around. Remember, the kickoff is a free kick. It's anybody's ball. Whoever goes and gets it keeps it, and Jeanette will keep it after that month. Looked like Brian Whiteman came out of that pile with that fumble recovery. Now Jeanette back on offense is just trying to dig it straight down the middle against Wash High, and they'll do so inside the 10. And again, Jordan Hall carrying the ball. Well, Jordan Hall's been all over the field so far tonight, hasn't he? So now he gets to go off and rest. Picks up about seven yards on that play. Second down, a short three. Still two and a half minutes to go, and we're in the first quarter. Pryor dips down under center. Power eyes strong to the right side, and they're going to run it left. And the ball carrier, Jerry Harris, is in the home plate. He'll score the touchdown. And Jeanette jumps out to a 26 to 6 advantage over Little Washington. And the tires starting to roll downhill. Oh, <laughs> you better believe it. It's a racing tire, too. Well, you're not going to knock him down by trying to bump him. You've got to go in and wrap him up, and they're not doing that right now. Last extra point was blocked. Let's see what they can do this time around. They're going to pop this one. As a matter of fact, they brought Mike Danko back in, and he scores it. 2.20 to go. First quarter, Jeanette 27, Wash High 6 here on the Comcast High School Football Game of the Week. Well, the Prexies have to regroup a little bit here. They have been their own worst enemy of late. Two turnovers deep in their own territory, leading to touchdowns. Only took them two plays to get it in, 34 seconds. But if you give them that kind of field position, they're going to kill you. And you just, you can't do that. Unfortunately, the last two fumbles have led to two quick touchdowns. Quick as in lightning fast touchdowns. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Boy, Jeanette, when they have that ball, they're going to score quickly. Washington started it off. Thomas Kelly cut a four yard pass from Chad Smith. That after a great 77 yard kickoff return by Joe Ward. But then Jordan Hall scored on a 15 yard reception from Pryor. Pryor scored on a two yard quarterback keeper. Jordan Hall recovered a fumble and returned it 12 yards for a touchdown. And then Jerry Harris just scored from a couple of yards out. 
There are his numbers on your screen. And Harris touchdown, a seven yard run. This is quite a bit of talent for a double A ball club. <laughs> you better believe it. Kickoff sent deep. Up the middle. And here they come. Washai with it on the return. And they're going to get it out slow. Look at that second effort up to the 30 yard line. Bursting through after everybody thought he was down with Sean Vaughn. Tough situation for Washington. They're already down 27 to 6. We still have time ticking in the first period of play. And they know that they can do it, but it's been tough and they've made some errors as we see that kickoff return again. Right now, and coaches will tell you this, and coach speak is considered cliche, but cliches are true. They have to take it one play at a time. One snap at a time. That's what Washington needs to do to get its head back into this thing quickly. Well, they need to make some first downs and control the clock a little bit, something they have not been able to do so far in this opening quarter of play. Here comes the blitz. And the handoff, and they try to run through it, and this time Sean Vaughn doesn't find anything. He gets spun around, and he'll be dropped for at least a yard loss. I can't remember the last time they had a positive yardage play. That first touchdown drive, that was about it. That slant pass that they threw. And the touchdown pass. That, I guess you have to go back that far. Sean wants to blow. He wants to get off the field. So that'll bring Joe Ward back on, who had that electrifying opening kickoff return that set up a touchdown. But since then, it's been all Jayhawks. And Chad Smith's defense, he was pretty good on that opening drive, but he hasn't had any time since then, Chris. Just nothing at all. Ken Baker says they got Washington did got some forward yardage on a holding penalty in the second drive. That was the last time they moved it forward, and now their quarterback gets dumped, sacked back at the 25-yard line. Chad Smith goes down. Well, they're, they're rushing five and six guys. They're just coming from everywhere. You know, they've got the lead. The pressure is on Washington, so they're just laying their ears back and going. Mm -hmm. Wash High looking at third down and a little more than 15. The ball is sitting at their own 25-yard line. And we're inside the 52nd mark of the first period of play as the clock rolls quickly downward. 27-6, to six, the Jeanette Jayhawks over Wash High early in this game. Smith brings him up to the line of scrimmage once again. Barfield in motion. Smith back to pass. Can he get it off? Yes, he does. Swing pass left, and they set the screen. And it is complete, but they're going to lose a yard on the pass play as Jeanette recovered well. Ramonte Barfield was over there trying to block for the receiver, Joseph Ward, and just couldn't spring him off that screen pass. And they're actually going to move that ball up, so they say no loss, no gain. Fourth down, 15 yards to go, and John Wash High is going to have to punt it away. Yes, they are. But we are at the end of the first period of play, so they'll pump when we return. 27-6, Jeanette over Wash High in the Comcast High School Football Game of the Week. I feel like there's always somebody watching me. I can't see them, but I know that they're there. Does that sound crazy? Actually, sir, it sounds like spyware. Oh. Let's get to work. Computer Patrol is on duty for any problem. You know that's just the, uh, yeah. Computer Patrol from Pentella Data. Our geeks are smarter than their geeks. Tomorrow's college football stars are on the rise right here in Pennsylvania. Next week, Parkland at Freedom, featuring... Parkland at Freedom, Friday night at 7. Also, Grove City at Wilmington, Saturday night at 9. Tonight's broadcast is brought to you in part by the Radisson Hotel, Pittsburgh Green Tree. For reservations, visit Radisson.com. 
and by Dell's Restaurant, Dell's Bar and Ristorante, a Bloomfield tradition. 27-6, Jeanette leads as we get set for the start of the second period of play. It has been all Jayhawks since Washington got that first score on the board, John. Well, as it wound up, they lost 21 yards in offense. And we'll show you some of that graphically <laughs> in just a minute. In the last two games, 60 to 6. Wow. That is amazing. Well, they averaged 8.6 yards per play, did the Jayhawks, and the Prexies averaged a minus 1.6. We get set to start the second period of play. First play is going to be a punt. Washington will have to get rid of it. The man in your picture there is Jordan Hall. He is the lone receiver back deep and around the 34 yard line. And they're going to have good field position unless he gets off some kind of a terrific punt here. Chad Smith, good snap. Not much of a rush. It is a good kick. He's going to bag it pretty well. This is Hall. 40, 45, 50. Nice cut back. Look Hall, at that 40, speed. 30. Penalty flag is down. 20, 10, 5. A Jeanette touchdown unless that flag calls it off. It is coming back. In fact, there was one early that they didn't call, I thought, as he turned the corner the first time. Almost a block in the back. They didn't call that one. But it was a great run of what, about 63 yards, but it's coming back. Holding is the call, according to our referee, Denny Laria. Turn holding against the return team. That's a post scrimmage kick spot, which is the spot of the foul now. Ten yard penalty, first time. Still a dazzling return by Jordan Hall. Worth another gander. A penalty could have been called right there on that block. Boy, he made some nice cuts. Yes, he did. And he's got great speed. So they're going to mark the ball at the 42-yard line, and that's where Ray Ritz and the Jeanette Jayhawks will have it in Washington territory. Terrell Pryor is going shotgun here, and they're going to a spread offense. They have four receivers. Pryor looks. Now he's flushed. He's going to be hit and dropped. Sam Miller, John, that's, that's the man you the keep in the pregame show. That's the combination right there. That's the first time that they've been able to do that. And they kept him from getting outside. Let's take a look at some of our first quarter highlights. And most of them favored, of course, the Jayhawks. They were outstanding. Nice and smooth and easy. Just lays it in there. The touchdown catch made by Jordan Hall. Then sneaking for a touchdown himself. The defense got in on the act. There's the strip. And once again, it's Hall. As we come back to live action, a screen pass over to the right side and catching that ball, James Derry, and he's down the far sideline all the way inside the five before the Prexies catch up and Caleb Pemberton brings him down from behind. Well, he was not going to be denied that time. We'll go back and take another look at that. We were showing the first half highlights. There's the little dump off. He had some help out there. Great job of getting away from that tackler, using his speed to turn it up. Actually outran the blocker that might have got him into the end zone. 46 yards on the screen pass. Pemberton again for Wash High in on the stop. But the ball is set up at the Washington five-yard line. And it's first and goal from actually the four, just inside the five at the four. Pryor gives off. And Jeanette will try to run the football. That's James Derry, I believe, their fullback, running back. Yep, you're right. He was the one who got the screen pass earlier. Was Derry running into that crowd? Jeanette's looking at second down and goal. They have the ball at the one, so that was a pickup of three yards. 27 to six. They already lead. We're early in the second period of play. 21 yards on the ground so far for Derry. They're going to go to him again, and this time he's going to be brought down. 
Great tackle by Wash High's Caleb Pemberton. That Second was time a good Pemberton's tackle. Caught him. He was not able to see. He put his head down, got him low, and knocked his feet out from under him before he could step around the tackler. So that was a great job right there, especially down at the goal line. Mm -hmm. Caleb Pemberton has made the last three tackles defensively for Wash High, so he's come to play here tonight. Third and goal. Pryor turns and gives Drops the ball. bobble. And that ball is on the grass. And Wash High says it has it back, and it does. Joseph Ward has recovered the fumble down deep in Prexy territory, and the Jayhawks shoot themselves in the foot here. Well, that's the first time they've had a possession that they haven't scored tonight. See if we can get a look at it. No, see he who he never hit. had the ball. Nope. Just a bad handoff or a bad exchange, and Jordan Hall never got the ball in his gut. It came loose, and the Prexies jumped on it. Very alert, Joe Ward makes the recovery. Wash High back in business, albeit with their backs at that proverbial wall. Have it at their own two-yard line. First down and ten from there. What was it the Jayhawk fan told Katie? We'll show you who we uh, Jayhawk <laughs> is after the first quarter. To the tune of 27 points. Uh -huh. Now the Prexies need to prove it to themselves that they can get this thing out of the hole. And Pryor looming along that line. Here he comes on the blitz. Safety? No, he threw it away. Sidearm throw up to the line of scrimmage. And it'll be ruled an incomplete pass, but that was dangerously close to either being a safety or an interception. Let's take another look at it. Look at Smith getting racked. Was that caught? That, now, the Jeanette players are saying the ball was caught in the end zone. Well, the officials didn't say so, so nope. obviously that's not the case. Yeah, that's the last place you want to complete a pass. Because if that's that the last place you want to get intentional grounding, well, too, because that's, that's going to cost That's you. automatically, too. You're yes. right. Well, Prexy's going to try again to dig it out of there. Chad Smith, second down and 10 from the two. Two backs behind him, staggered. They're going to try to run it to the fullback. And we see a penalty flag or two out there as they push it out to the five-yard line. And Mark Wise carried on that play. Live ball motion against the offense. Uh-oh. Half the distance. That's not good. Right now, they're just having trouble keeping it from being tackled in their end zone. Jeanette may want to decline this. Let's see. Live ball motion against the offense. The penalties decline. Third down. Yep, they'll take the down instead. They do advance the football forward, so they gain two yards. That's the first positive gain since their first drive on offense. Wow. You know, we talked about Terrell Pryor and the Jeanette offense so much. What about this defense that the yeah. Hawks are throwing at him? And very good so far tonight. I told you, they're very fast and they're very strong. Third down and eight. Little Prexies with the ball. Smith has time, throws one out near side. It's caught. And Washington will come up with a first down on that pass out to the right sideline to Ramonte Barfield. That is a huge play, and unfortunately that time, they gave Chad Smith enough time to get the ball off. The receiver was open, made the catch. A huge, huge first down for the Prexies. Barfield's second catch, that one a 15-yarder. And indeed, a huge first down. Barfield with 26 yards receiving. Here's his latest pickup. He's one of their key players. Ball is out to the 20. First down and 10, Little Washington. Chad Smith, Barfield, Joe Wood, they're considered their top offensive threats. Smith dropping back, giving off. Running left with the football and hurdling. Tacklers is Sean Vaughn. And there's some positive yardage for Vaughn and the Little Prexies out to about the 26-yard line. Sean Vaughn's only 5'5", 170 pounds. Of course, Jeanette has Mike Penn. He's a running back, a freshman who's five feet tall and weighs 95 pounds. I know, that one jumped <laughs> off the page at me too, John. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 
Yeah, I mean, maybe he'll grow a little bit. He's just a freshman. They have a lot of freshmen on their roster. Ray Ritz and the Jayhawks do, and uh, a lot of those guys got playing time last week, and uh, you know, Washington's trying to make sure to keep them on the bench this week. Last week, Jeanette came up with a 60 to nothing win over Brownsville. The starters got pulled after the first period, and now laundry. And again, I think it's that offensive line for Wash High. Prior to the snap, both start against the offense. Five-yard penalty. Re that tough break, that's going to put them back at the original line of scrimmage after that first down pass reception. So the clock is going to start spinning again here in the second period of play. Coach Bill Britton and his staff imploring the offense to play it smart. Second down and 10 they're looking at now. But Chad Smith is pretty good size as well. He's 6'2", 210 pounder. Has already thrown three touchdown passes in his first two games. If he can get some protection, he can throw it. Oh, another flag before the snap of the football. Delay of game. Prior to the snap, delay of game. Against the offense. You got it. Yes. Five-yard penalty, and the clock will start on the snap. Thank you. I say I like the way he does that, Chris. He's he's very definite and positive in what he's telling us. Fourth penalty against Washington, the second one that Jeanette has accepted. It makes it second down and 15 yards to go. They need to get past the 30. We're right at the 30-yard line, John, to get the first down. And 6.40 to go in the second period of play. Washington needs a first down. They trail 27-6. to six. And Pryor is the deep man in the defensive secondary right now for the Jayhawks. Mark Wise comes goes the blitz. to in motion, and Smith is going to roll out. He buys himself from time, and now he's going to be hit and dumped. And Jeanette able to clean up the quarterback. Kenny Grant gets the sack. Just too much speed that time. They were coming up the middle, forcing him out of the pocket, and before he could get himself turned upfield or find a receiver on the run, there was enough speed there for him to nail him. Excellent defensive pursuit. I thought Smith was going to be able to break out of this thing, but the speed of Jeanette, their secondary, Kenny Grant, coming up from the backfield, putting on that hit. Now it's third down, and the West Virginia border, it looks like. Third down and 22 yards to go. The ball's all the way back to the eight. They need to get to the 30 to get the first down. I'm good. I'm good, right? Presidents want a timeout, I think. Is that their third timeout? They're Jeanette. done. Oh, Jeanette calls the time. Oh, okay. okay. Jeanette okay. calls time. All right, so Jeanette, their philosophy here is to stop and think about it a little bit, see if they can pin Washington way deep in their own territory. They stop them down deep. They have another scoring opportunity quickly before we go to halftime. And, again, we still have plenty of time for that. 5.51 left in this second period of play. And Wash High Stadium here on the top of the hill, in the city of Washington, Pennsylvania, here in the – Deep southwestern corner of the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania has grown quiet, with exception of the ladies with Katie right now. That's right, guys. The Wash High cheerleaders have been working overtime tonight. They may be down, but it does not diminish their spirit here. What you got, girls? We are me a little something here i'm now an <laughs> honorary prexy uh, cheerleader pretty good huh not bad yeah Back but to you. <laughs> she's got the wrong color though if yeah she does oh. gotta she's be close gotta be blue katie <laughs> third down at 22 wash high has run off five plays that has garnered them positive yardage in this ball game and again jeanette showing blitz smith back to pass and a little Inside wraparound handoff that hit the turf and was finally picked up by a very alert Sean Vaughn, who got some positive yardage out of it up to the 15-yard line. Now, did they put that ball on the ground intentionally and Sean Vaughn picked it up, or was the wraparound awry? How about the Comcast DVR instant replay is going to give us the answer to that, maybe, we hope. Oh, I bet it does. 
Yeah, there's the wraparound handoff, but I'm not oh, quite no. sure he was expecting it. No, it, it squirted out, John. All right, Wash High looking at fourth down and 15 yards to go. Smith is in to punt, standing at his five. Uh, once again, good field position because Jordan Hall is inside the 50. And he is dangerous, isn't he? Yep, but right, he dropped this one. Picks it up at the 40. Looks for direction and finds some. And he gets it back into Wash High territory to the 49. <laughs> He's impressive, isn't he? <laughs> Even after he dropped the ball, you knew he was going to, he was standing inside the 50 and the kick was a pretty good one he went back and dropped it around the 40 but was able to recover and again it would seem that he's a little bit like prior in that he lets the game come to him mm -hmm. he did not try to do too much just worked his way forward and did get on the wash high part of the field that's a good job 27 6 Jeanette there's a look at Jordan Hall helmet off He'll get a little bit of a breather. Coming into the ball game now, Greg Williams goes out wide to the right side. To the left, it'll be Nick Spino. There's and that straight ahead that running quick again. Opener again. And that's Mike Matt, the fullback. And Matt is ahead for a nine yard pickup down to the 40. Well, that's one thing they definitely wanted to do. They wanted to go tackle to tackle, work it up the middle, and it's, it's worked beautifully. They haven't really had to operate under a spread offense much tonight because they've been able to pick up positive yardage for following those guys up front. They're talking about Chris Hall, the center. Or excuse me, Chris Hall is the center. Sammy Moore and Matt Gravis, the guards. Look out. Fake the inside handoff, and now they're going to go around the right side, and guess who has the football? It's none other than number but 11, Terrell I Pryor. I think there's a flag down, though. I th I think you're right. That's back at the 30 yard line. They detected something. Holding. Against the offense. All right. Holding against the offense. And that will bring that 40 yard touchdown by Terrell Pryor back. Let's see if we can find it. Fake to Matt. And no one knew Pryor holding had the ball. Against the offense. 10-yard penalty from the spot of the foul. Repeat second down. I did not see it on the no. DVR instant replay. You know, the coaches were telling uh, Mike White, our scholastic sports editor from the Pittsburgh Post-Gazette this week, that uh, Terrell Pryor was running some 40-yard dashes with the rest of his teammates. Then all of a sudden, he decided to really run. Two stopwatches timed him at 4-3. Wow. Awesome. That's when he turned it on. Here's a run around the left side this time. And helmets cracking as Jerry Harris turns that left corner. And Harris is going to be shaken up. He's holding his left knee as he was brought down out of bounds over on the near side by Caleb Pemberton. That was a sharp hit and an excellent play. I'm not sure where he grabbed himself. If it's a cramp, if it's a hamstring, if it's a knee. Awesome. Listen. Ooh. And then it looked like he might have gotten kicked as he rolled out of bounds. We'll have to wait and see. Looks like they're working on a cramp. Kind of rubbing that hamstring there. Well, this is a night for it. Very, very hot, very, very humid. Temperature today got to about 90 degrees here in Pittsburgh. It was red hot here on the western side of the Commonwealth. The national champion, Pittsburgh Passion. Pittsburgh's professional women's football team will be holding tryouts on September 8th and September 15th. For more information on tryouts and the team, visit their website, pittsburghpassion.com. They are the National Women's Football Association champions this year. They were 12-0. What a fun time we had watching Pittsburgh Passion play. And it will be a little different for them next year, maybe. Of course, they went through undefeated and won the championship this year. But a couple of those leagues, and there are like three women's leagues, are going to merge. And that's probably one thing they're going to have to do if they're going to build the program. And congratulations to yeah. an outstanding group of young women. They did a great job. You and I both had the opportunity to broadcast a passion football game or two. Jerry Harris is the injured player on the sideline. And, uh, John, we're getting some indication that they are working on his knee down there. Okay. Taking a look at him. And we hope that young man's going to be okay. It's Terrell Pryor. 
Getting a bit of a break with the offense out there. Helmets off and water bottles on the field right now in this steamy evening. 4.02 to go, second period of play in the just Comcast High School football game of the week. Just had a 40-yard touchdown called back by a holding call, but you can just see you were you made the right analogy when you said it's like a man playing with boys, which is he's not only is he bigger than most of them out there, he, he just plays at a different pace, you know? He's got a great stride. Uh, he just he looks like he's a big time football player, and that's what everybody in the country believes too. That's why so many of the scouting services, John, have him ranked as the number one high school football player in America. <laughs> Jerry Harris getting a nice hand, and again, we hope he's going to be all right. A long walk over to that other sideline when he went down in front of the wash high bench. You know, last year in the state championship game when Jeanette lost to. Wilson area Shaw Sunder came up with a very serious injury he had a lacerated liver suffered in that game he was hospitalized in Hershey for uh, for several weeks but uh, fortunately Sunder was able to recover come back and play football and last season uh, made it back to the basketball team in time for the playoffs you know, also that's a team that lost by one point in the championship game yeah. in Hershey but as I said coach coach Ritz is not even thinking about Hershey he's thinking yeah. about tonight and next week the interstate conference. That's all he thinks about. I would think, though, with young men as highly touted as these guys are, it, it would be difficult sometimes to keep their feet on the ground. Jerry Harris has a touchdown in this game and rushed five times for 17 yards. Now they're going to have to play without him right now. Third down and one for the Jayhawks. And Terrell Pryor has to get his offense. Back in gear. Not that they haven't been tonight. They're going to go with a spread set now. And the quick opener up the middle. Oh, Second and third effort. How about work. Mike Matt. Fullback 6'2", 220, a senior. You know, they had him stopped short of the first down. And he just would not stop driving those legs. And he had enough strength to get the end yardage and get the first down. Good effort. He stopped right there, but he won't quit. Excellent run, and once Mike Matt was through that line, that's second and third effort for all his. 30 yards on the ground so far for Mike Matt. Pryor, option, he'll take it himself. He'll turn the corner. Sheds a He's down the sideline. And makes a cut and move inside the 10, drop just shy of the five-yard line to Rell Pryor on the gallop. And, you know, we have yet to see him, see him run all out. He's just kind of in cruise mode as he gets the corner. He had no intention of pitching that ball back. He <laughs> I don't <laughs> think so. He had it tucked <laughs> into his arm. <laughs> Sheds that tackler. Looking for some help. Okay, I'll take my gain and go down. He's, he is special. 30 yards on that carry for Pryor. And there, a look, uh, there is a look at his numbers right there on your screen. And keep in mind, he did have a 40-yard touchdown that was called back by a holding call. 322 to go. We're in the second period of play. Jeanette, after Wash High jumped out to a 6-0 lead, has scored 27 unanswered points. And let's find out what Katie Sesney's up to right now. Katie. Hey, guys, we talked a lot tonight about Terrell Pryor, a fantastic player, and he is missing his biggest fan tonight. In fact, we are here with his grandmother, Marlene Arnold. And Marlene, what happened just before the game? Terrell's brakes went on his car, so he's really upset they can't be the game. First game he missed. But, Terry, we know you're rooting for us, and he's doing a fantastic job. This is Terrell's dad, this right? This is Terrell's dad. Yeah, yeah, he couldn't make it here tonight. He's he's trying to find a place to actually watch the game. Yeah, it he's is going over to my house to watch the game so that he can root for him from my house. But Grandma's here, so it's all good. But Dad is Great missing Terrell. tonight, and we hope he's he's able to watch the game as well. Back to you guys. Great, Katie. Thank you very much. That's good terrific. Stuff. I'm glad we were misinformed. We thought it was his grandfather that wasn't going to be here, and it was his dad. Well, I guarantee you. You'll have plenty of chances in the future to watch him play football. Mm -hmm. Maybe at several other levels. <laughs> That's exactly right. <laughs> Injured player for Wash High, Caleb Pemberton, one of the hard hitters out there. Yeah, he has five been, tackles so he's far. He's been working hard on defense, and he's walking very slowly to the sideline. 27-6.
And right now, Terrell and the Jayhawks are knocking on the door. Don't forget, coming up at halftime, Katie Sesney will have both fans from both schools, Jeanette and Wash High, and we'll have a very colorful show. We see Touchdown. Pryor with a fake handoff and a roll around the right end for the TD. Well, you know, it, it comes back to haunt the Wash High Prexy's defense a little bit because they've been running the ball so much over and over again up the middle so that when he sticks that arm in there and keeps the football, there is nobody in the area. He has been magic. Take another look, another angle. After the play fake to Hall, it was all Terrell. And look, he's played the whole first half. Yeah, he has. <laughs> Something he didn't do last week. Exactly. John, you're right. You're right. That's yeah. a good point. Mike Danko is out for the point after. Well, they're not going to get this one off. Somebody moved. Told you about the bands coming up at halftime. Don't forget Mike White, the Scholastic Sports Editor of the Pittsburgh Post Gazette, will be joining us as well. To Prior to the him snap. False start against the offense. Five yard penalty, redo the try for points. Well, Mike has kind of been in Pryor's back pocket, I think, lately, and so <laughs> he should have some good stories to tell us. He's been keeping a diary. He and Terrell, Terrell have been chatting, and they actually keep a diary in the Post Gazette of what's going on day to day. High snap, they control it, and that kick is going to go way out wide to the right, and no good for Mike Danko. So that five-yard penalty cost you a no possible good. extra point. 3-11 to go, second period of play. But the Jayhawks lead big 33-6. to I have to find out if Terrell has his own website yet. He does. Does he? I checked it this week. Okay. Terrellpryor.com as we take a look at the numbers on that scoring drive that he just finished off. Six plays, 48 yards, five-yard touchdown run. He got it in the end zone and made it look easy. And now you see why everybody is so high on Terrell Pryor. Uh, with good reason, obviously. He scored two touchdowns, thrown for a touchdown. Those are his numbers to the moment here this evening. Ken Baker keeping our digits up here in the press box. Doing his typical masterful job at that. Hasn't had to take the shoes off yet, though, I've noticed. So. Is that a kind of a ritual or well, what? He's got the fingers working. He has to count oh. with his hands. And, you know, when the yardage gets too He would have had his shoes off at the West Virginia game last I, week. I think he would have. <laughs> That's a game you called that we got to see. And, man, they were piled on the, the numbers that game. Here's a, almost a line drive kickoff, and the Prexy's going to bring it back. Barfield hit, dumped on the near sideline, and brought down at around the 27 with 3.03 left here in the first half of play. And that's the first time that they haven't tried to run that kickoff return right straight up the middle. On Comcast On Demand right now, Pet Adoptions features dogs and cats who are homeless through no fault of their own. You can check out dogs and cats available for adoption from the Animal Rescue League in the Animal Stories. Pet adoptions only on Comcast on demand in the Your Town folder. Let's go, Hawks! Hawks! Chad Smith, two touchdown passes last week, one tonight. He'd like to have a few more if he can get loose, but it's been tough, and he goes under the blitz once again and gets dumped back at the 25. Well, they are just bringing everybody all the time, and you can see even that time Pryor was up in there. And you don't want to see him limping around the quarterback. Oh boy. Yeah, I think he's going to shake it off, though. Ian Bill Britton, talk between every play. Loss of two, second down to 12. Positive yardage has really been tough to come by for the Prexies tonight. And we're getting a really good look at the Jeanette Jayhawks, how powerful they are on offense, how powerful they are on defense. Don't forget that other third of the game, special teams. They look pretty good there, too. High backfield this time. Smith drops back, gives off. And the running back gets smothered in that pile of white jerseys back at around the 24-yard line. Jason Marquis was the first guy to get in there. They just have, there's been no room up there. 
And on a hot night, Time another player is net. down. Wash High is going to have that player attended to. We're trying to figure out who carried the ball. We couldn't even see, and his number is out of our view as we take another look. Let's see if we can grab it here. Sean Vaughn, perhaps. Nope, 25. Check that. Joe Ward. Joe Ward here. An electrifying start to the game. Jeanette, I have an injury timeout. So does that mean we have to have two timeouts? I think so. <laughs> <laughs> Third down and 12, and they're still working on the running back, Joe Ward. Ward minus six yards rushing on four carries tonight. That's what kind of night it has been. Yeah, you can put a minus by almost every one of those guys. Well, it's been tough. Sean Vaughn, the only one with positive rushing yards. He has 11 on four carries. Well, Mark Wise has one yard on two carries. Ward minus six. Chad Smith minus 37. Most of those on dumps and sacks and good to see that Joe Ward has popped Time back out, up. Jeanette. Well there, there's the answer to your question. <laughs> we got the injury <laughs> timeout now the regular time. <laughs> well the defense of the Jayhawks just wanted to catch their breath and remember Katie will have both the bands from Jeanette and Wash High in uh, two minutes and one second. Tonight's game is available in three million homes all over Pennsylvania from Philadelphia to Erie and of course Pittsburgh to the Poconos. We're live on the Pennsylvania cable network all across the Commonwealth tonight. We thank you so much for tuning in no matter where you're watching from tonight here in uh, Pittsburgh or beyond. And of course uh, here on Comcast the FYI channel every Saturday night at 7. We carry the tape replay of our Friday night game. Then on Monday it'll be available on demand. Right now let's find out who's watching Katie Sesney. Hi, guys. Well, it is Battle of the Football Teams right now. Coming up very shortly, it is Battle of the Bands. We have Wash High with their rock and roll show this evening and rock and roll three themed show. And I know ACDC is one of those numbers, but I won't give away everything right now. Next with the Jeanette Band, we have a swing show. So good stuff coming up on halftime. Don't miss it, guys. That's a deal. You're going to direct, Katie? Yes. Okay. <laughs> well, she did cheers. Why not? Yeah, I know. That's what I was thinking. She's talented. Smith back Another to pass sack. sack. And that one was just a straight drive by Jordan Hall who put his shoulder pads into it. Big loss here. That defense by lining up on. seven or eight guys. Jeanette. They've used all three at our timeouts. the DVR Comcast instant replay. John, give credit to Jordan Hall. He tried to pull up when he knew he was going to plow into that quarterback. He popped him just enough to put him down and then Tried to back away so no further injury would develop. Well, Chad is still walking a little gingerly as he heads back to the huddle. I'm not sure, and you can see he's doubled over, that they expected this kind of pressure from Jeanette. Well, the blitzing has been just tremendous by the Jeanette defense and unrelenting. Well, we saw what the coach talked about. Coach Ritz says we're going to line up prior all over the place defensively, and we have seen him do that. We've seen him blitz from a defensive end. We've play, seen him play deep at a safety spot. Uh, he just plays wherever they need him. That is him, number 11. Jeanette has used its third and final timeout of the half. Washington is looking at fourth down and 22 yards to go. The ball at the 16-yard line in the president's side of the field. Chad Smith's numbers to the moment. Well, keep in mind, the Prexy scored first in this game. A great opening game kickoff return by Ward. 77-yarder. Thomas Kelly finished off the drive, a four-yard pass reception from Smith. And Ramonte Barfield had a nice slant in catch in that opening drive as well. Ever since then, all Jeanette. Smith to punt, no rush. Ball's going to bounce over top of Pryor, and he tosses it off to Jordan Hall. Hall hit, bounces free. Hall, sideline, cut up, 40, 30. Hall, 25, still dragging people. Finally brought down at the 19-yard line. Jordan Hall off the pitch from Pryor, who fielded the punt, takes it inside the red zone in the Washington end of the field. Oh, that kid is something. I mean, you can talk about 
Terrell Pryor all you want, but there's nothing wrong with number two. We've seen him offensively. We've seen him defensively. See how he lets the defense come to him. Now he puts on a little speed, strips a tackle, and then just keeps driving his leg. So he's been outstanding on the return team tonight. Well, he's been outstanding on the offense and on the defense, too. I like him. Nick Powell wrapped him up and went for a little bit of a ride, but he did hold on to drag him down. And now the presidents have called the timeout here. And it'll be their last timeout. Jordan Hall is a junior, 5'9". He's not very big, but he's solid, 180 pounds. So he'll be back next year. And you mentioned the youth they have on this Jayhawk squad and the fact that a lot of those young players are getting an opportunity to play Washington a lot early on. Washington is also out of timeouts. All right, both teams, the referee acknowledges Denny Loria have exhausted all of their timeouts. Big return yardage for Jordan Hall tonight. Jordan. Right, tw averaging 27 yards per return, 81 yards total on three tries. Well, he's a good one. It is a muggy, hot night here in western Pennsylvania. The air just is not moving at all. There's, I, I don't feel a breeze at all coming through the windows. There are the numbers we spoke of graphically spelled out for you. And I'm surprised we haven't had more guys cramping up. Mm -hmm. Obviously, they're taking on as much fluid as they can. Now, Pryor and the offense step up to the line. Line of scrimmage officially the 18. First down and 10. Running back behind Pryor is James Derry. And he has four wide receivers split out, three to the right. Straight drop. He's got and a man open in the flat. They set it over to the right side. It is caught for a short yardage gain for the Jayhawks. Hauling in that ball was Greg Williams, the wide receiver, 5'11", 150, only a junior. And a two-yard pickup on that play. And quickly, Jeanette goes right back to the offense. 119 to go here in the half. Let's see if he keeps putting it in the air here in the final one minute and 18 seconds. That was a straight drop back there. Slots to both sides. Now motion. Pryor running the option. Pryor keep it. 10, 5, spun down at the 3. Pryor showing you his stuff again. Well, it's just like he has it on cruise control, Chris. He just makes it look so smooth and easy. 13 on that carry, John. And we have another injured little Prexy down inside the five yard line. And we mentioned the yardage that he put together last year, passing and running in the area of 3,400 yards. He doesn't want to come out, does he? Romante Barfield. And he has been very good for Wash High here in the opening half of play. And his coach is going to take him off. He was a little on hip that pointer, tackle. maybe. Yeah, he was on that tackle on. Terrell Pryor and Barfield uh, John as we said earlier caught those two touchdown passes from Chad Smith in the opening weekend victory over our tribal Waynesburg 16 to nothing. Prexy's made the playoffs only twice in the last five years but they won the 2001 WPIAL and PIAA state titles beating Penn Argyle 19 to 12 that year. They were in the WPIO finals five times over nine seasons back in the late 90s and into the new century. Here's a run, and Jeanette back on the scoreboard again. The ball carrier, Jordan Hall. The Hall just followed his blockers that time, and using that 5'9 size, he kind of hit himself behind those big guys up front. Just get down and go. Push, push, push into the end zone. And there's just nothing that they can do. James Ellis, number one, was there for the Prexies, but too little, too late. I'm wondering how much you know, some of the starters will play in the second half with a score of 39 to 6. Well, you took the words right out of my mouth. Mike Danko is on. They roll the snap back, and he tries to kick it, but it goes wide to the right and no good. So the score is going to stay 39 6. That was a bad snap that time. There's no way that he could get it properly up on the tee and that he could get a good leg into it. So Danko, no chance on that play. I believe that the uh, Jayhawks have they've scored on all but one possession tonight, haven't they? I believe so, yeah. The one was where they turned the ball over. Mm -hmm. Looked like it was going to be some kind of an affair when we started this ball game with Washington getting the 
77 yard kickoff return as we see Jeanette's latest scoring drive on your picture and uh, Thomas Kelly scoring on a four yard pass play from Smith Crexies moved the ball well downfield and then all of a sudden they got shut off it was all set up by Jordan Hall and that excellent punt return after the lateral that he had and he has been impressive Pryor has made it look easy but Jordan Hall has been special here in this first half. John Staff will do the long kickoff duties. He has the ball teed up at the 40. And on your screen there is Sean Vaughn of the Wash High Little Prexes. Also back there, Mark Wise. Where's that Thomas Kelly? Thomas Kelly back there also. Here's the kick. End over end. Kelly takes 15 20. Kelly hit. Stood up, thrown over backwards. Somebody had him down low, and then finishing him off was Mario McGowan. And Montel Walker was the guy that had him down low that time. Excellent coverage, and again, they tried to run it back up the middle. They've only tried to go outside with a kick return once in this game. Of course, they had the great success on the opening kickoff when he ran it back 77 yards. There's some props to Whiteman. He was in there as well, Brian Whiteman. 6'3", 170, sophomore, big tall kid. 10th grader. 37 ticks left, half number one. Prexy's going to try to dig it out of here now. Well, other than the opening drive, they've not had very good field position, but there's another turnover. Oh, man, Mark Wise had some yardage, some positive yards, about seven yards on the game. Then all of a sudden just lost the handle. And the Rock went down to the field, and Mario McGowan comes up with a fumble recovery at the 30. So another turnover. Watch it on our Comcast DVR instant replay. It just simply popped out of there, and uh, right there for the Jayhawks to fall on. Again, the Jayhawks went ball hawking. Wise hit twice, and the Hawks were going after that, that pigskin, and they found it. Well, let's see if this first-team offense tries to put one more on the board in the final 30 seconds. They won 60 to nothing last week against Brownsville. Pulled the starters after the first period. Tonight, Jeanette is up 39 to 6 as we head to halftime. Terrell Pryor, his starting lineup, still out there on the field. Slots to both sides. Pryor, short drop. Now he wants to run with the football. Breaks Whoa. one tackle, can't break the second one. Nick Powell wrapped him up around the knees and brought him down. If Nick Powell doesn't wrap him up around the knees, he might have gone all the way for a touchdown. It was almost like a quarterback draw that time, the way it turned out. He felt some pressure, just hesitated, and then took off. There's Nick Powell, number 50. He's not very tall, 5'6", but at 2'03", he's pretty powerful, and the Jayhawks are going to let the clock run out in the opening half. We have come to the okay. end of the first half of play. Jeanette with a 39-6 lead over the Wash High Little Prexies here in Washington tonight. Chris Shovlin, John Sanders, Katie Sesney on the call. Don't forget, uh, during halftime, we will have both bands from Wash High and from Jeanette. And also joining us a little bit later in the half will be Post-Gazette High School sports writer Mike White, who will be talking about his uh, diary column that uh, he's conducting with uh, Mr. Pryor as he uh, tries to whittle down his choices uh, for the next level and uh, university uh, status as uh, he has a number of different choices, a number of different options. Obviously he does. Uh, he can go about any place he wants to go collegiately, but uh, I think Mike and I both agree that it would be someplace that plays a wide open type offense that would suit him best where he can run and pass, but you never know. Uh, he's still in high school and uh, he's still got a lot of things going on. He's going to have to hear from a lot of people, but he maintains that he will make the decision himself as to what he's going to do. Well, of course, when we came here tonight, everybody was talking about Pryor. Uh, you know, a lot of folks wanted to see a good football game, but Terrell Pryor was on everybody's lips. And, John, he has displayed that he is the real deal. He has. There's, there's, you know, as I say, he plays at a different speed from a lot of these kids. And you can see that he's so comfortable in what he's doing. We haven't seen him sprint in this game. That we have not, and uh, it'll be interesting to see if uh, how long he plays in the second half, if he does at all. Of course, uh, last week 
We uh, saw Coach Ray Rich take his starting lineup out after the first period of play. Coach Rich is with us right now in the Comcast Coach's Corner. Ray, first of all, I need to ask you how Jerry Harris is. Uh, do you know his condition right now? Well, he's right now we're, we're going to keep him out the rest of the game. We think it's a hyperextension, so until further notice. But the pain's subsiding, and we're going to ice it up, and you won't see him the rest of the night. Uh, Coach, you told me the other day that you were going to go tackle to tackle. And I tell you what, that was your game plan, and it's worked out pretty good for you so far tonight. Well, we're very fortunate. Things are working our way. Uh, the way the game started, we weren't too happy. But the kids are doing a nice job right now. And, of course, uh, young Mr. Pryor is as advertised. I was telling Chris that he seems to play at a different speed than the other guys it, and he's always under control and I don't think we've seen him sprint yet he kind of cruises you know well you know what he's deceptive when you watch him on film he's he looks like he's trotting but he's so smooth that he's actually moving quick he's a tremendous athlete he's got a gift from God I tell everybody that he's at another speed and we're very fortunate to have him Ray, I know a lot of folks in the stands are wondering how long uh, does he and some of the other starters stay in I'll be honest with you, we're, we wanna, we're gonna talk, our coach, and we're gonna talk right now. We don't wanna have men too long. We'd have liked to have had 35 so the clock would run, but uh, we, we sort of screwed up on our uh, extra points, but they're not gonna be in long, maybe a series of that. I mean, we're gonna have a talk with all the coaches and see what, how everybody feels and we'll go from there. All right, Ray, thanks for joining us no, at halftime. thank you, thank you very much. Head coach Ray Ritz of the Jeanette Jayhawks, what a juggernaut he has on his hands, John. Well, he does, it's a great team. He's doing a great job with them and he's trying to keep them grounded and I think the important thing too, maybe one more series, he doesn't want anybody to get hurt. That would be the last thing he wants. Big lead for Jeanette right now as we head for halftime and look at that score, 39 to six. Jayhawks over Wash Eye. We'll come back with our halftime show with Katie Sesney right after we take this short time out on Comcast. PA Books takes you on an odyssey through Pennsylvania. This week, the author of Barbaro, Sean Clancy, Sunday night at 9. What do the following people have in common? They're all from Pennsylvania, and they've all been featured on PCN Profiles. Documentary filmmaker Mark Bustler, Sunday night at 10. America's manufacturing is all over the globe these days. But look at Pennsylvania. Lots of the things you see and use every day are still being produced right here. PCN Tours takes you inside Pennsylvania's factories to show you how things are made. Your guide from the company will walk you through the whole process, from raw materials to the finished product. PCN Tours Mount Joy Wire, Sunday night at 8. PCN programs on VHS and DVD are available for purchase online. Go to our website at PCNTV.com, click on PCN Store, and browse through hundreds of program titles, tours, books, profiles, Gettysburg Battlefield Walks, PIAA Championships, and PCN merchandise, all in a safe, secure shopping environment. Visit the PCN store at PCNTV.com today. Pennsylvanians watch state policy leaders on PCN. Policy leaders even watch each other. I watched our new president pro tem of the Senate, Joe Scorner.